What's up guys, it's Matt Collins Jones here, also known as D365 Geek, and today we're talking about Power Automate, and we're talking about the Microsoft 365 Outlook Connector, or as it's now known again, uh, the Office 365 Outlook Connector. Uh, the name has changed back and forth, uh, I'm just going to keep referring to it as the Microsoft 365 Outlook Connector. Um, and we're going to look at an action today, which is Get Calendar Views. So what this action allows you to do is pass in some date variables, so date parameters, and get all your calendar events in that view. So let's take a look at it. So I'm in Power Automate here. Uh, I have my flow and I've got a trigger for when a, an event is updated, uh, added or deleted. Then I'll click on New Step. Uh, you'll notice that the Microsoft or the Office 365 um, action or connector has been removed from this nice and quick, easy list. It's now in the second row uh, here, or you can just search for it in the connector and actions bar there. Just click on this, and then we can go down to the Get Calendar View of Events, V3. So this is the action we're going to be looking at today. So I select it, and it asks me for a couple of things. So it asks me for the calendar ID, the start time and the end time. So the calendar ID is the ID of the calendar that we want to be like that we want to get the information from. Um, I can like use dynamic content and have it trigger from this one, um, or I can hard code in. In this instance, I'm just going to hard code in and choose calendar. That's the default calendar in my Office 365 environment. Next, I need a start time. So I need to say right when we go and trigger this, we want to get uh, all events between two points in time. So we need a start time and an end time. So the start time, I'm going to use a expression. I'm going to try to say UTC now. Um, doesn't want to work. Doesn't want to do me the intelligent and uh, the intelligence there. And the end time is like when we're doing this. When we're doing this too. So again, it needs to be in um, the ISO uh, format for times. Um, so we've got here like the example um, 2017-02-01. So the 1st of February 2017 at 8am. Um, so I'm going to just use UTC um, stuff because that's a bit easy. So in here, I'm going to add another expression uh, and I'm going to add, add days. And then we're going to use UTC now. And then we're going to add four days onto this. <coughs> Hopefully that works. Great. Now I can show advanced options. The advanced options here give me uh, a few other things. So I've got the ability to do a filter query. So I can filter the data that's coming back by an OData query that I put in. So I could maybe say only have it where um, the subject contains um, name or something like that, or subject contains this key phrase or um, the, you know, you won't really need a date because you've got the dates in here, but you could do some other sort of OData filter query in here. Um, you can also order by, so we could say, right, order by, like, you know, newest to oldest or, you know, vice versa. So we can do that uh, using this and an no data query. We have a top count, so the total number of records that we want to retrieve back. So what this is actually going to do, this is going to bring us back an array filled with multiple records. So if that starts to go into sort of like the hundreds or the thousands, we might not actually want that. We actually just want like the first maybe 10. Um, we're not default to all because we don't really have that many in there. Skip count, this is the number to skip over. So it's going to find um, the first one that's coming back and then you can say, okay, I don't actually need the first five. I just want that to the last 10. So we can just put like a five in here and it'll skip over the first five and then go up to 10. Default zero, meaning it's just gonna bring everything back and not skip anything. And search, this allows you to search for text matching the event body or subject. So in here, we could just say, okay, we only want it with something as a, a specific um, key phrase or keyword in that subject as well. So we could use that or we can use an OData, filter, uh, OData query. The search query is a little bit easier to use. So now we've got to set up. Let's test it out and take a look at it. So we'll click on test. I'll perform a trigger action. Save and test. And then we are going to flick over to our Outlook calendar. So this is my Outlook calendar. So today is the 5th of August. Um, can't believe it's all the story. Um, and we've got two events coming in the next couple of days. So we've got this is a this is a new event and a special meeting of the government. So today I'm going to add a event in, um, a, uh, event to trigger a flow. And we can hit save. 
And what that should do is that should trigger the flow and that should bring back this event and the other two events. So we'll go back to the flow. We can see that the flow ran successfully, so that is all good. Uh, it is having a little bit of issue rendering at the moment on my laptop, so we'll just drop out and drop back in because that makes it a bit quicker. And we can see this triggered, and then we can see that we've got um, we we can we can see the inputs here, and we can see the outputs. So we've got this array here, this JSON array, and we've got some details. So we've got a subject, um, so that's the name of the event, start date, and end date. Uh, and time. Uh, we've got the body, so um, any text that would be in the body. If it's HTML true, uh, response type, so I'm the organizer, uh, that's the, um, the response there. Or if I was an attendee or an optional attendee, it would have it in there. Just some IDs created on, etc. Uh, reminder, so we've got all this stuff that you're used to seeing in, in Outlook events. We also have the other one straight underneath, so this is the new events, that was the second event um, happening tomorrow. And we've got this other one, this special meeting of the government, uh, which is the day after. So that's really cool because we can we can get these things and we can list them through. So one of the things that I thought you could probably use this for is um, emailing about your day or maybe emailing about your week. So uh, I'm a big Google person. Um, I know, um, don't hate me. Uh, I was born into the Google system, it seems like, uh, before I started this Microsoft career. So um, my calendar is a Google calendar and daily I get an email with what is on my, my Google calendar for that day. So what I could do here um, if I want to use this um, for my Outlook calendar is I could go okay right give me um, the events that are happening um, this week Let's stick it in a HTML table and let's email that out to me at the start of every week so I have a, a quick um, glance at like right these are the things that are coming up and then I can dive into my calendar um, and look at it. So I can create a HTML table and I can say, okay, well, I hit some custom columns. So we're going to have maybe subject and we'll add a uh, subject in here. And then we're going to have the um, start, start time and then the end, end time there. So I can just trigger this from that previous run. And then what this is going to do is this, this is going to generate me my HTML table. Uh, there we go. So I can have this nicely formatted. Um, you know, I could maybe do some manipulation around the start, start time, the start date to make it a bit more user friendly. Um, and I can do some formatting around these if I wanted to. But this gives me something that I can use. So I could set this up so that every week or every day I just get an email I can read in bed um, just as I'm getting up in the morning and say right okay I've got these things on my agenda for today um, and get my mind already working towards that thing um, or maybe I could do this um, for my team so if I'm managing a team I could have this trigger and I could see all the events for my team for the week so it's great if you don't want to have to dip into multiple calendars all the time and, and check out these things you could just get like a one-page brief at the start of a week right this is what everyone's doing I'm going to talk to this person about this, or I'm going to cancel this meeting because I can't make it, I'm double booked, I'm trying to this. So it's a really, really useful um, action here. But as always, I want to know what you guys use this for, so let me know in the comments down below. What do you use this for at the moment? Uh, is this something new to you and you use this in the future? Let me know your thoughts. Uh, if you did like this video, if you could like and share it with your friends, that would be much appreciated. I've just hit one thousand subscribers so me telling you at the end of every video to hit that subscribe button is seem to work so thank you each and every one of you that subscribed um, if you've not subscribed hit that subscribe button right now and stay up to date with all my latest content and i will see you next time